tutorial on Unity 2023. We're going to begin by starting with the Unity Hub. So whenever we begin new projects or we check to see that Unity is installed, we start with the Unity Hub. And so we're starting right here. So I want to show over in installs right here, I have 2023.2 install. That is the latest version when I install this. And of course, it's now currently installed showing this. So if you're landing in the Unity Hub for the first time, you can go to install editor. And right here for me, 2023.2 uh, is the current most updated version. And of course, they have long-term support for older versions. So 2023.2, and that's the version I have installed and there's a slightly newer version than the one I currently installed but we're going to go with 2023.2. So when we're starting new projects come over here to the projects and come over here to new project. So we have lots of different options when we create new projects within Unity. We can look at core and sample and learning as well as all kinds of other things. For the sake of this extended series I'm going to start right up here at 2D core. And the reason I'm going to do that is to make it a lot easier to understand what's going on within the code. We're not going to quite tackle 3D yet. I might tackle that in a future series, but at least for this one, starting with 2D. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead over here in project name and call this example. So I have example. I have right here what's going to be installed as part of this PC. And of course, my username is Videlis as part of Unity Cloud Organization, but I'm going to click that. I don't want the Unity Cloud for this particular example. You can use it for yours if you would like to use that. So we're looking for an empty project configured for 2D apps. That's what we're interested in doing. And we're using 2D up here, 2D core. And I'm going to go ahead and click create project. So it's going to take it just a second to set everything up and notice little circles there. And now we see Unity has popped up and is running for us. So remember, the first time you create a project, it tends to take quite a while to load up. So as this loads up, I'm going to talk a little bit about how Unity works. So Unity is a game engine. And when we talk about game engines, we're talking about the thing that drives the experience. So it drives the experience for a player and is the game engine based on this name. So if you think of the metaphor of a car, a car has an engine, or if you think of a train or a truck or whatever is your vehicle of choice, it has a particular engine and that drives the whole experience. Along with that driving experience, there's a bunch of other things. So if you're sitting in a car, it might have a sound system, it might have a steering wheel, and a bunch of other things. So we think in a more general generic sense of a engine or a game engine having a bunch of different systems. So Unity has a set number of systems in the same way. It has a sound system, input system, a rendering system, it's what we call drawing to the screen, and a bunch of other systems. However, there are a bunch of different systems and potentially a whole bunch of different things in the game. So in order to connect what could be potentially thousands or millions of different things going on in a game to all those different systems, we use something called components. And components allow the different objects, the whatever we have in our game, a whole bunch of different things, to connect with those various systems. So we say, hey, I'm interested in if something happens with the sound system or I'm interested in if something happens with input, or I'm interested in some other system that might be happening. And this allows the Unity system to run very fast. So instead of telling everything that's going on in the game, everything that's going on all the time, which is potentially a huge amount of information, instead it filters it and it says, hey, you tell me as something in this game what you're interested in. What you're interested in is based on the component that it has. So we can tune into different systems or subscribe to different systems and hear about things that happen by setting up components on things in the game. So when we're looking at Unity right here, we move over here in what's called the hierarchy area right here. We're going to create various things. And then when we click on them, clicking right here, we're going to pop way over here to the far right that's under Inspector. And what that's going to do is it's going to shift us from an entity, something that's in the game, to its listing of components. And remember the components allow us to subscribe to different systems. Are we interested in sound? Are we interested in input? Are we interested in a bunch of other possible things? So in 2D core, we have one initial thing that's in the game and that's called the camera. And the camera allows us to see into the game space as a player. So whatever the camera's looking at is what we're currently showing to the player. And it is an example of something we call in Unity a game object. So because Unity is based on a tradition of programming terms, then it uses the term object. Now the term object is just a description of a collection of different values. 
So when we translate real world things, what we might call physical things into a digital setting, we can't quite translate everything. For example, everything that makes up a cat includes its DNA and its history and its fur and all kinds of details. And it can be intensely overwhelming to attempt to capture everything that a cat has. But if we think about it in a digital sense, we may not need to know everything a cat has. We may need to just know a few things. Does it have a tail? Does it have a long tail or short tail? Does it have four legs? Does it have particularly long whiskers? And so an object in a digital sense allows us to reduce the complexity of something that might be physical or material in a digital setting. So we can say, hey, I'm making something that is like a cat, but I only care about these four things or these five things or these dozen things. I don't care about everything that makes up a cat. So when we talk about unity in terms of game objects, we are allowing unity to create a bunch of things that we might use in the future. So for example, I might need a camera because I want to look to see what's in the game. So Unity helpfully has a bunch of built-in things that allows us to see into the world, cameras, move things around, as well as interact in a number of ways. And these are all built-in game objects. And remember, an object is just a collection of some values. So we have game objects that we click on and then we talk to their components and internally, those components talk to systems. So, over in Hierarchy, if I click on Main Camera, I have a list of all of its components. It has a Transform component and a Camera component. So I don't have to figure out how cameras work and any of the math involved. Unity has helpfully provided a component that talks to the camera system. So I don't have to figure that out. In fact, I can just use drop-down menus or change values and it's everything's in there. Notice it also has a transform component. Something we're gonna find as we work with more game objects is that they all have something called a transform component. That is, they have the potential to be somewhere in the world, a position, rotation, and scale. Now, the camera, we may not necessarily care about that. For future game objects, especially if we want to move them around, we do really care about that. So, let me review where we've been so far. We started by looking at the Unity Hub. We started the Unity Hub, double check that we had an editor installed and I have 2023.2 installed. And then we moved over to projects and I chose the 2D core project. I gave it the name example and then we clicked go ahead and create that project. And then as that was creating that project, I described to you how Unity works. That is, we create game objects, just collections of values that allow us to think about games as players or characters or however we want to think about it, just things in the world, game objects. Those game objects, to make a game run faster, has a collection of components. Those components talk to different systems. So instead of all things in the game getting all information at all times, we tune in, or in other words, we subscribe to things we care about by adding components. And we saw by clicking over here in the hierarchy area, I clicked on main camera, it sent me over here to inspector, and these are all components. And in fact, look, right here is a button called add components. So if I was interested in my main camera talking to other systems, getting information from other systems, I could set that up right here. And so we have the very beginning of a project within Unity 2023. We had from Unity Hub set up a 2D project, and now we start to understand how game objects, things in a game, also have components. Those components talk to systems. So a lot of concepts, but we can start to build on those concepts and really see how they come into play as we move into future videos. So at least for right now, we created a project and we've slowly gotten used to looking at all these different things in front of us. We looked over here at the hierarchy, clicked on something, and moved over here to Inspector. And that will be a common pattern we use across a lot of these videos, moving from game object to its components to then talk to systems. So a lot to get us started, but not too complicated. All we really did was create a project and I described what was going on in the background. But now we're ready to start to dive in to add more game objects, look at those components, and then very soon after that, start to write our own code to change how different systems interact with each other through their components. Thanks for watching.